The rate of infection and death are continuing to slowly flatten in New York State, although at least one county health official here in the North Country says their county has seen a doubling of the number of positive cases in just the past week or so. The hospital here in Plattsburgh is caring for about a half dozen patients who have tested positive for the coronavirus. CVPH's infectious disease specialist, Dr. Wader Ritsima, joins us to tell us how the hospital and its staff are coping with the crisis. How many COVID-19 patients are you treating right now at the hospital? So for now, we have four uh, confirmed positives in our intensive care and three confirmed positives on the regular floor. Um, uh, and that's actually the lowest we've had in, 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 a, in a couple of weeks. So you're seeing the numbers go down a little? Yeah, we're seeing less positive patients come, come in. Um, we've had um, a, a couple of uh, deaths, which has been very difficult for our team, but we've also had some real successes um, with uh, some very, very ill patients who are finally making very good progress and we've had some discharges. So um, overall, I think uh, the team's feeling a little bit better about uh, about things. When we talked with you a month ago, of course you were stepping up plans, preparing for a surge and influx of patients. You luckily never have gotten to that point. Things aren't as, as bad as you feared back then they could have been. I think we're feeling like we're, you know, starting to see a, a, a decline. Um, uh, you know, which wouldn't be a surprise um, if the if the measures that the governor put in place um, uh, around social distancing were effective in in some in a place as challenging as New York City. There's no reason they wouldn't have also been effective here. And of course, when they were put in place at the same time, the extent of infections in our community was probably far less than New York. So we really got the benefit uh, much earlier in our epidemic curve of the various uh, social distancing and, 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 and business closures that really have made a huge difference. Um, the potential here was pretty drastic, uh, but, but those measures really, really um, have changed our outlook on this. You mentioned the testing. Is there still a critical shortage of test kits? Do you still wish you had more test kits so you could make testing more of a priority? We have a limited supply of um, the ability to test inside our lab. Um, uh, I think the last time we talked, we talked about the possibility that we could do one hour turnaround testing. Uh, we have received uh, materials to do that. And these are lab materials. They're not the the swabs and the, and, the, and the test tubes for collection. That's a different thing. So we have a limited capacity to do that, um, uh, but it will be very useful for us to be able to test people as they come into the hospital um, and get a test result quickly will uh, allow us to, to, be, to do a better job at targeting our resources towards the people that need it and not expending a lot of uh, protective gear resources on people that aren't aren't positive. Through the work of, of the University of Vermont Health Network, we are in the process of getting uh, far more collection kits. So if you recall, the, the, the limitation on our testing was not the testing capacity at the Department of Health lab. It was the actual kits required to collect it. There's a special swab and there's a special test tube of of uh, media that, that the swab needs to go in. And that supply is now opening up to us. So I think by next week, we will be able to open up testing, um, uh, probably through um, the availability of testing through doctor's offices. What about your staff? How are they doing now a full month into this pandemic? Uh, how stressful has this been for your doctors, nurses, and, and other healthcare workers at the hospital? So I think it's been very stressful um, on a couple of different ways. Certainly the, the staff that are on the front lines and actually working with um, patients that are, that are positive um, have one set of stresses, which is, you know, um, I'm caring for patients that are sick. Um, I have to make absolutely sure that I use all of my 
um, protective equipment correctly, that I take it off correctly, that I clean, wash my hands, and, and that I don't take it home to my families and, 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 or, or, or get sick myself. So um, that is a, a, a significant stress, and, and obviously that's going to be felt by the people that work in the emergency department where they, you know, they don't always have a lot of information on patients. They don't always know whether people have it or not. Most of the time they don't, they're guessing. Um, and then the people in the ICU, the people on, you know, we, we have done um, all of the coronavirus care on one or two floors, not, they're not scattered throughout the hospital. Um, so those people have those stresses um, uh, and, and those are significant stresses. I think the other stress is, um, for, for our other uh, uh, members of our team, it's a different set of stresses. Um, we're not operating anywhere near full capacity. Lots of people are, are being sent home. Um, if they, you know, they, they can use their, their, their vacation time, which isn't a very fun way to use your vacation time, but you know, we, we, we have, and people are worried, you know, we know this is gonna take a long time to come out of. Like there's not gonna be a switch flipped and all of a sudden we're back operating at full capacity. And so, you know, I think people everywhere are starting to wonder what does this look like on the back end? Um, you know, what will my job look like? Where will there be jobs? I mean, I think that we're, we're very concerned about, um, we're starting to talk in great detail about what this looks like um, coming out of this.